Hi, it's Tyler, and welcome back to After the Run. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to explain why I was gone for so long, and I'm also going to talk about weight, BMI, and body fat percentage. So first, let me tell you a little bit why I had a bit of a hiatus here on YouTube. Um, mostly, it's for really good reasons. I've been busy, right? So in the last year, um, I've written my book about my transformation. I've started doing some public speaking. I've been on like 30 podcasts, a bunch of YouTube channels, sharing my weight loss story. It's been a, a blast. I also have done a lot of research on the impact exercise has on our brain. And I'm writing a book right now on brain boosts. I was accepted to give a TED talk on this topic, one that I was really excited for and I prepped for for several months. And then with COVID-19, it got canceled the day before. So that was really frustrating for me. I'm really enjoying the public speaking side of things. But in addition to that, I've also taken a new brand, Elementary Teacher Tips, and started building resources for teachers. Um, I'm a school teacher, so that's something that I'm doing on the side on top of my normal teaching responsibilities. With COVID-19, I started filming tons of videos of me teaching math lessons, and so I have a new YouTube channel just for math lessons. And then finally, just in the last month, as I've continued teaching my students who are learning from home, um, I started a new project called Virtual School Assembly, and I'm interviewing really cool people from around the world, actors, entertainers, uh, professional athletes, and having them share mini keynotes um, and then doing a question and answer period with them so that they can inspire kids who are learning from home. We're about 30 episodes into that, and I'm loving doing it, but it's a full-time job on top of my full-time job on top of all my part-time jobs. So I've been really busy. And I wish I could say that's the only reason you haven't seen me is because I've been really busy. But as you know, during the year that I lost a ton of weight, I was really busy then too and still found time to check in. So there's more to it than that. And, and it really boils down to this. I was so excited at the end of, so two years ago, I was 306 pounds, depressed, and I started making videos and working on my weight loss. Um, I changed my diet, I changed my exercise routine, and by this time last year, I had lost over 100 pounds. I'd gone from two, 306 pounds down to 203 pounds. I was feeling great. And that's why a lot of these cool things that I've been doing now started. Um, but then, Last year to this year, my goal was, I still, you can see I'm still a big guy. I'm, I'm really big, I've got this spare tire here. A lot of it's loose skin, but, but I've got a little extra weight on me still. And I, you know, after that first year, I thought, okay, I got down to 200 pounds. Let's see if I can get down to like 180, 185. And, and then I started looking at what people recommend, and it was frustrating because they said, according to my height and my age, my BMI, I was still, overweight bordering on obese and um, to get down to the right BMI I'd have to lose all the way down to like 250 or 200 155 pounds like 155 to 165 pounds that would be the BMI where I'd be a healthy weight and so that meant I needed to lose almost another 50 pounds this year well I didn't and part of the reason I haven't recorded any podcasts or shown any videos is because I'm kind of embarrassed. I've, I've continued to work really hard and just like the first 20 years of my life when I was gaining weight but I felt like I was doing everything right but I was still gaining weight. This last year I felt like I was doing everything right and I gained weight. So um, I, I, my weight's fluctuated in the last year but I a week ago, a little over a week ago, I was right at 230 which is probably the highest I've been since I got down to 200. And it was so frustrating. So at 2.30, I looked at that weight and I thought, there's got to be more to this story than that I'm just getting fat again. Because in the last year, I've ran over 1,200 miles. I did a double marathon in September, 52.4 mile run. Um, my speeds are getting faster and faster as I run. And it's getting effortless. I, I just got back from a half marathon that was just my normal Saturday run. I did it on a light jog, uh, finished in two and a half hours. And it was a really easy workout for me. And so I thought, I'm still eating healthy. I, I have let some sugar back into my diet. I even have a soda from time to time. Um, I'll snack occasionally. And, and lately, I've done more of those things. And so that's why I think 
instead of staying around the 215, 220 range, it did get up to 230 because I introduced some bad habits back into my life. But I knew that wasn't the whole story. I've been working really hard this year. I've started doing push-ups and sit-ups, squats and jumping jacks every day. I'm dancing with my students and my kids almost every day. In addition to working out regularly, I run almost every day. I bike a few days a week. I'm doing strength training several days a week. So I'm doing a lot of things right. Well, if you just look at weight and BMI, this last year was a total failure. But when you look at everything else, it made me feel much better. So about a week ago, I started, I just, I hadn't been keeping regular records, but I had screenshot things on my phone and my apps keep track of stuff. So I took all the data that I did have and I started making a spreadsheet. And what I found was during year one, when I went from 306 to 203 pounds, let's just say I lost 100 pounds that year. It just makes it easier for math. Uh, so I lose 100 pounds. Of those 100 pounds, 75 pounds were fat loss. 25 pounds were muscle loss. Now, or 24, and then one pound was like bone loss, bone density. Um, and so what happened, and this makes sense, is when you lose a lot of weight, you don't have as much resistance, so your body doesn't have to work so hard to maintain that weight. So you're going to lose some muscle loss. Plus, when you're losing weight really fast, you often lose muscle. And, and obviously, in an ideal world, you wouldn't lose any muscle. You'd only lose fat and you'd gain muscle. But during that first year, I lost 25 pounds of muscle. Um, the other thing during that first year, that, which is incredible, is I was 43% body water, which is really unhealthy. It's dehydrated. And so I started drinking a lot more water. I have the, This is 48 ounces and I drink about four of these a day, so about 100 ounces, or 200 ounces. And I love water. And in year one, when I lost 100 pounds, I actually went from 43% body water to 55% body water, which means that's a 12% difference. If, you, if I had maintained that same 43% at the end of the year, I wouldn't have weighed 203 pounds. I would have been closer to 170 pounds. And so my BMI would have been right where I felt I was, um, and I would have been much healthier according to the charts. But the, in reality, I was healthier, um, just BMI is stupid. And, and just measuring yourself according to your BMI and your weight is a bad idea. Um, I had gone from a 46 inch waist uh, to a 36 inch waist, and you know, there were a lot of other measurements that said, okay, you're doing really good. Well, in this last year, um, I gained essentially 25 pounds of muscle. So the 25 pounds that I lost, I gained this year, and I actually lost five pounds of fat. So even though I gained weight this year, and a lot more weight than I'm happy about, I actually am much healthier now than I was a year ago because I've lost fat. My percentage of body water has continued to climb, so now I'm at about 60%. And so again, you know, if I'd stayed at that 55%, that's another five pounds, 10 pounds. Um, yeah, 5% of 200 is 10 pounds. So I would be 10 pounds lighter than I am. So um, I think I just weighed in and I'm 220 right now after my run. So I'd be 210 pounds, so almost the same weight I was a year ago. But I'm 25 pounds stronger uh, and at least 5 to 10 pounds of fat uh, lighter. So, so body fat percentage then plays a key role. If I look at that from year 0 to year 1 to year 2 where I'm at now, that tells a much more compelling story. I started at 40, almost 41% body fat when I was at 300 pounds and morbidly obese. This time last year, I brought that all the way down to 23% body fat, which is still overweight, uh, but much healthier weight. And if you account for all the extra loose skin I have and take that out, you know, I'm probably at a decent um, health level a year ago. Well, this last year, despite putting on 20 to 30 pounds, I actually went from that 23% down to 17.5% body fat. So, um, according to body fat, that tells the true story. I'm getting healthier. I'm adding muscle while I'm removing fat. That makes a lot more sense. And so, I'm back for now. I don't know how often I'll make these videos because I am incredibly busy right now and will be through the summer. 
But uh, as I sat down with all the numbers, I set goals for this next year. So I want to share those with you now, and I'll probably check in from time to time to let you know how it's going. So right now I'm at 220 pounds. A week ago I was 230, so that first week, when, when you kind of let yourself go for a while, that first week you can usually take off a lot of weight. It wasn't water weight, my water percentage is actually higher now than it was a week ago. Um, but I worked really hard this week because I'm starting a new training regimen. I really do want to get under 200 pounds and I want to stay under 200 pounds. So that means I'm going to have to lose a lot of fat if I want to maintain my muscle. And so what I've decided is I'm going to do three things with my diet and three things with my exercise and really commit to it for as long as it takes uh, to get to my goals. So in my diet, I'm going completely off sugar, no snacks, and just two meals a day, which most of those things aren't a big departure from what I'm already doing. Uh, on the two meals a day, I usually have breakfast on the weekends, but intermittent fasting the rest of the time. So I'm just getting rid of that extra breakfast on the weekends, where I feel like I need it because I'm doing these long runs. But the truth is, I'm working through the morning anyways and could just have a good lunch when I get back. So, so that's the change. The no snacks, I have been snacking a lot more lately and had a lot of sugar with it. And so that's why my weight has jumped up. So I'm getting rid of those things. Um, and then on the exercise side of things, I'm continuing to, to lower my mileage running, but be more intentional about it. Do more speed workout, high intensity interval training, um, and really working on improving my pace. I'd like to get under a six minute mile this year, I, and not six minutes, under seven minutes. I, I, the last mile I did was like 7.12, and I want to do uh, a mile faster than seven minutes. Um, I'd love to be able to do a half marathon under two hours this year. So I want to improve my pace and I'll do that by being more intentional in my workouts. So half hour of cardio a day, but being smarter about it. Half hour, excuse me, of strength training a day. So I'm going to put on even more muscle. Um, it, I like, you know, I, I'm not ripped, but I'm starting to get a little bit of definition on my arms and in my legs. and. I would like to get some more muscle because I, I'm selfish. <laughs> so I'm going to do a half hour a day of strength training. I've done that every day this week and it's the most I've ever worked out in my life. Um, but I, it's been gradual working up to this and so I'm not like super sore or tired or anything. I'm not going to get injuries because I'm being smart about it. Um, so I'm doing that and then the third part of my exercise routine is every day I'm going to do 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups. Uh, and then I probably will do 100 jumping jacks and 50 squats too because I'm in the habit of doing those. But 100 push-ups and sit-ups, that's my goal. So that, those are my goals moving forward. I'd like to take that 17.5% body fat. I'd really love to get it down to 12%. Take another 5% off my body fat this year just like I did last year. That would put me into an elite fitness level. You might even be able to see my abs and stuff like that. So that's what I'm shooting for is 12%. It might take me... 90 days, it might take me six months, it might take me the full year. Once I get there, I'm going to reevaluate and change my goals. Um, but I'm really going to push until I get to that 12% body fat. What that means on weight, I'm not sure. I think that it'll put me probably around 190, 195 pounds um, because I'm still going to be working out a lot, but I'm not exactly sure. That's why I don't really care about the weight. What I care about is the body fat percentage. If I'm paying attention to that, then I can pay attention to my health. Hope this episode was helpful for you, and I hope to be on periodically throughout the summer. If you want to know about anything in particular, drop a comment in the comment section, and that will give me a reason to make a video. So if you want to know about my workouts or my diet or other things that are going on in my life, um, I'm happy to answer your questions, and I'll make videos for those. All right, see you later. Bye-bye.